magic duels, and I was going to go through yet more of the basics in demonstrating how to play the game, uh, especially in accordance to the electronic version here, which is again magic duels. Now there are again other generations of uh, magic online, including, well, magic online. Yeah, they were pretty apparent about that one. <laughs> uh, now, there are, of course, other electronic magic games, but again, as I've said before, Magic Duels is said to be one of the most accurate to playing Magic the Gathering up to this point. Now, there's going to be another one upcoming called MTG Arena. I'll probably get into that one later, but for now, I'm going to get into uh, this one here as before. Now, as I was doing before, I'd like to go through uh, details as to how to play the game and going with the basic magic first. Now we've done the basics and parts of the turn. Uh, now I'd like to go to group blocking and trample. This is actually consider considered such, the thing is trample is considered such a basic ability uh, and like very long standing. And the way it relates to the basics of attacking and blocking is so innate compared to a lot of other things that you kind of have to know about it really early on. So I can see why they put that here. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to be going into this one here, because it's the one that seems to be the next one up. And as before, since I've already technically done this, I won't be earning any additional coins. So, that's a thing. Now, here we go. I have reduced the music volume a bit, because I found out when so much steam is... The ex with the exact program I was using before, so that was a thing. <laughs> I do like how they got the picture here of the guy literally assembling the training drone. Like, <laughs> it's like, here's an artificer, and his one job is to build training drone constructs for people to fight. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's like, you're, you're literally having, uh, like, planeswalkers show up and just blast this thing over and over. <laughs> I can see where you need to repair it. <laughs> it even has a few battle scars on it. You can have multiple creatures grouped together to block a single attacking creature. This is a good way to gang up on a larger threat. Your opponent chooses how the attacking creature deals damage to your blockers. As before, I'll also summarize that, uh, regardless of whether or not you heard it, because I'm still readjusting a lot of settings. But for now, I'm, I'm just going to do that regardless, because I, I, I have heard it, and I have heard it back in my videos, but just in case, because you never know when these things... Uh, have an issue. Uh, but basically, whenever you're going into the attack and blocking phase, where you're, uh, where somebody, where one player declares, uh, attack, darn lips. Okay, in the attack phase, one player will, uh, basically determine their attacking creatures that they're having out of their allotment in that area. So out of the ones that they control on the battlefield, they'll determine which ones they want to actually attack the other player. Or, as I'll demonstrate later, a planeswalker they control that's on the field. Now, the thing is that that also means the other player has a chance to respond with blocking, and they will declare their blockers. This is uh, indicating how group blocking works, where you have to sometimes gang up on a creature. Now, this illustration here has a couple that uh, both have a power of three blocking a creature, although it doesn't exactly show exactly how much toughness it has, you can see that they've together dealt six damage to the attacking creature on block. And this has caused <laughs> that one to, uh, well, that one's a goner. It's going to the graveyard. So let's go on to the actual rest of this skill quest, shall we? Usually, an attacking creature will deal all its damage to the creature that blocked it. But a creature with trample can deal its excess damage to the defending player. Yeah. As this one basically said, and this reason why I said that Trample was considered such a basic and yet fundamental ability to the game, uh-huh, yeah, because this one alone rewrites the rules of how uh, blocking and attacking work, uh, and it's so, so old of an ability. I mean, this has been around for a long time. Uh, for those of you that's more into Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, and in Duel Monsters, this will seem rather familiar. In that game, whenever an attacking creature uh, uh, defe uh, defeats 
a another creature in combat that's been sent to defend against it, and if that if both if both creatures were in attack mode, then what will happen is excess damage is dealt to the defending player's life point total. In Magic the Gathering, this is very similar. In fact, this is pretty much one of the abilities that inspired this in Yu-Gi-Oh! later. Although attacking and blocking, or in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh! defending, is considered a bit different, it was basically inspired by this ability. Although in that game, it's pretty rare to get a direct attack by comparison uh, to Magic the Gathering. A lot of things in Magic the Gathering are, ba are based specifically on getting a clear shot. And it's, it's, it's not nearly as common in this game as it is in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, in terms of being able to deal damage to a defending player. Uh, because you'll have a lot of things blocking you and getting in your way. So, in Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, Duel Monsters, they consider this kind of ability basic to how the game is played, where direct shots are very rare. In Magic Gathering, direct shots are more how you try to do it. And <laughs> the... Uh, use of trample is actually not really that uncommon either. It, it happens a lot, but it is kind of a bit more rare to, or I should just say a bit more uncommon, because it's not really that rare at all. But it's a bit more uncommon to have your excess damage dealt to the player after killing another creature. In this case, the example has a creature that has apparently dealt four points of damage to this creature here, and dealt two to the training drone in the illustration. Now, this creature here has six points of attack power, er, or, well, just power, in the, <laughs> in the uh, purview of Magic the Gathering. Now, this symbol here is important because this indicates that the creature has trample. Now, in Magic Duels, there's a lot of symbols that indicate abilities. This isn't normally in the physical cards, but it is a way of uh, pointing it out so that you can visualize it on the field, going, oh, this one has trample, this one has flying, uh, this one has uh, an ability called menace we'll get into later. But right now, it's basically showing this creature with trample dealt four points to this creature, which had, at, at the time, four points of toughness. But, because it had two points left over since it had six and it only needed four to take this one out, it dealt the remaining two to the training drone. So that's how trample work, is excess damage basically uh, goes over. You'll see trample and group blocking in action in this skill quest. To complete it, block the incoming attack and win on your next turn. Okay. Now, basically, this one is starting on the opponent's turn. So, whatever I have on my field whenever I reveal it will be what I'll have to work with. And, of course, whenever it comes to my turn, I will get an additional draw, which may be something useful, maybe not. It depends on the skill quest. Sometimes you've got all that you already need to win. Mm-hmm, I can see how this is gonna go. <laughs> To block an incoming attack, click and drag one of your creatures to the attacking creature you want to block. Once you've selected all the creatures you want to block with, click Confirm Block. Mm -hmm. now, this is kind of as before, but a bit different because the creature here has Trample. This is Vulping Goliath. It's not, because it, it doesn't have a, a set it's from that's in the game, uh, you won't be able to get it in Magic Duels, but I do believe this is in the actual game. It's the one with physical cards, so uh, this just isn't included in anything other than the demonstrations like this right now. So as I've zoomed in, you can see, and this has reminder text saying this creature can deal excess combat damage to defending player or planeswalker while attacking. As, I, as I've been kind of indicating, and we'll go more into detail later, planeswalkers are kind of treated as extra players, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's something that had to be readjusted a few times as to exactly how they handled that, as you might imagine, because that, that was pretty big when it, when it came through, finally. Now, this, because this creature has trample and it has six points of power, that means it can deal six points of damage overall uh, in, in this exact case. And I have a couple of creatures on the field that are able to block. Now, they will take it out, and it will take both of them out, because they, together will be able to take out this creature. They both have three points of power and three points of toughness, as, as you can see here. Uh, so, power, toughness, remember that. Well, the thing is, as uh, I group them together to fight this one creature, they will take each other out, because its six points will take out their total six points of toughness, and their total six points of power will take out a little bit more than its five points of toughness. However, 
on defending, that same ability does not work in reverse. This is very important. If a creature has trample, it does not, except in the case that it says so, deal any kind of uh, retributive damage to the player that's attacking. That only goes in the direction of the defending player. So, if I don't block with both of these to take out this one creature, then any excess damage it has will take me out because it's only got me set here with one point of life left. So, what I need to do... Click these. Now it says, uh, and drag. I don't think I've ever been dragged. I mean, apparently you can, but it's a lot easier if you just click a couple times and kind of toggle. But anyhow, now I'll confirm block and you'll see how two creatures together can take out one bigger one sometimes. That was at the end of the turn, they didn't have anything else to do. Now, I've got a forest, but I too have that same creature, a vulpine glass. And the same situation that I was worried about before on my uh, on my turn is now gone reverse and it's going their direction. They weren't able to play anything further to help them because again this is a demonstration and skill quest, so they won't be able to have anything to stop me from basically running over this steel wall which is literally a wall. I mean, there are literally creatures in Magic Gathering referred to as walls. So this is an artifact creature wall. It has zero uh, points of power and four points of toughness, and it has defender, meaning it cannot attack. It's just meant to be a defense, which is also why its casting cost is so cheap. And we will be seeing these steel walls later in some story quests. So, yeah, that's that's going to come up later, but you can't actually, like, play them yourself in this game, so just saying that situation comes up. Well, actually, you might be able to play them yourself in this game, and in fact, I'm pretty sure you can, just you can't do it in terms of, like, your personal collection and stuff like that. You can only do it while you're in story mode. So it's... Uh, uh, yeah. So it's one of those things that only comes up in certain situations, but again... Uh, the more important thing to remember is its toughness compared to my creature's power. And I am going to literally run it over. And this will be very exact in this skill quest. Because it has four points that I'll have to take out. And I'll have two remaining, and that's exactly as much as the training drone has. So watch as this math works out perfectly, because they made it that way. They defend. Uh, attack back with in this combat situation. There's dealt no damage. I literally run over. Great job. And that's it for uh, this one. We come back. I'll be doing a little bit more of the skill quests again and showing. Uh, a bit more of the game. Now, uh, I would like a little feedback before, otherwise I'll just go on to it, uh, but I might want to go into the advanced skill quests for other things uh, that are the additional rules before I even get into, like, the story mode, like, under how to play advanced. We have, again, all these skill quests that I might want to show off first. So I just kind of like to know if anybody would like to see all that's in Magic Duels uh, in terms of skill quests before I go on to the uh, main like stories and stuff. And I do believe you can basically do a lot of this stuff before you go into actual story mode. Although it does guide you through what you can and can't do at first. In fact, there's a lot kind of forces you, it, once you've gotten the game new, to go into story mode, saying, oh, uh, to do this, uh, go, in, go into story mode and, and go through these, like, campaigns and stuff. So you're like, okay, and that's pretty much what you do. Now, even while you're going through them, if you, if it, in it, at any time it runs into any ability that's introduced here in that time, whether it's on the opponent's side or your side, it will basically get you to go into a skill quest in the middle of the battle. It will memorize the exact layout of the field so that you'll return to it later. You'll go into a skill quest, do that, even be able to earn coins mid-quest, uh, mid and uh, come back out, get, get right where you left off, and go from there. But So 
these will actually come up even during the story mode, so I'm just just saying this is one of those things you kind of got to know. But for now, this has been the Glitch Reaper, and I'll leave things off here. So I'll be locking off, hope to hear from you all later, and bye for now, everybody.